treatment options for lung nets, um, we break this into a couple different categories. So, so one, uh, mm -hmm. in patients with early stage disease, so where something I something that is not spread to other organs, um, we're talking about surgery. Surgery is always, always, always the best option for an early stage uh, lung carcinoid. If this can safely be done. Um, now, now, there's sometimes tumors are in bad locations um, where where this can't where this can't be done. There's lots of different ways to do the this the surgery. I'm not a I'm not a thoracic surgeon, but I work with uh, I work with some very good ones, and and uh, <clears throat> and so I'm familiar with these techniques. So um, so we tend to to take as little lung is possible, uh, but still doing a cancer mm -hmm. operation. So generally speaking, um, the treatment of choice is something called a lobectomy, where we take the entire lobe of whatever lung is affected. Uh, and it's important to also sample the lymph nodes, um, not only immediately adjacent to the tumor, but also within uh, the middle portion of the chest called the mediastinum. And this helps us give, it helps give us an idea has this cancer spread, and can we have some sort of prognosis on this uh, on this uh, tumor moving forward? So surgery is always the best option for early stage disease. Now, if I have patients that say, "Look, I don't I don't want surgery," or or my surgeons say, "Look, this is not in a good place," or maybe because of other um, comorbid conditions, uh, they're not a good surgical candidate for whatever reason. Um, some of the things that, that we've done here is some focal radiation. So something called stereotactic body radiotherapy or SBRT. Um, the data with SBRT is primarily in patients with either non-small cell or small cell lung cancer, primarily non-small cell. Um, and it works very, very well. Um, and it, it, in non-small cell, this, you know, the radiation oncologist will say, oh, well, this is as good as surgery. I don't tend to think it's as good as surgery, but it's certainly a, a good option. If you think about it, a lot of patients with non-small cell lung cancer, this is a smoking-related illness. So they've got, they, they sometimes start out with really bad lung function. And so we, we say, all right, well, you need to have so much lung function in order to safely have an operation and not be a pulmonary cripple at the end of the operation. So, so if they don't think that's the case, if they can't safely do this or are going to harm the patient somehow, um, then SBRT is going to be the next option. Now, now what we have said, all right, well, if this works in, in non-small cell lung cancer, possibly this will work in carcinoid tumor. We've got, we've got some data, including our own institution, that says, yeah, it actually can be beneficial and help controlling this uh, disease. Uh, so, so the, the, you know, these tumors are rare, and I just said this is 2% of all lung cancer. So if you can imagine the data with SBRT in non-small cell, lots of data in carcinoid, not a whole lot of data, but nonetheless, this is uh, sometimes an option for, for patients. Um, if patients say, well, um, that I don't want radiation or I don't want surgery. Um, you know, there's sometimes, um, there's sometimes we say, all right, well, depending on how aggressive this, this tumor is, uh, maybe observation, uh, or what we call active mm -hmm. surveillance may be an option. If in the patients that I'm doing this on are relatively asymptomatic, and maybe I've got a scan on them, uh, and a, a new diagnosis, and I see a two centimeter tumor, and they say, oh, I don't want surgery, and I don't want radiation. But I look back and they've got a scan from eight years ago, 10 years ago, and I see that two centimeter tumor there that, that hasn't changed at all. And I say, oh, well, well you know, maybe, maybe you don't need anything right now, uh, but other than watching this moving forward, and if it changes, well, then, then at that point, maybe we need to think more about some treatment. Um, Hmm. There's medicines called somatostatin analogs, uh, which we have a lot of data for in, uh, in patients with uh, neuroendocrine tumors of the, of the abdomen, so the GI tract or pancreas. Uh, 
uh, tend to work very well in helping control the growth of this disease. Uh, not, you don't see much in the way of shrinkage of disease. Um, there is a little less data in lung, um, uh, but nonetheless, we, you know, it is, is certainly an option for treatment. Um, you know, but that, and that would be one of the first things that I'd be thinking about in uh, patients who are non-operable, who I don't think radiation is a good idea, or who have advanced disease. So disease that is spread to the liver, lungs, or liver, contralateral lung, bones, elsewhere. Um, so, and then, so that's, that's another option. Another option would be um, using something called a targeted therapy. So there's one FDA approved therapy for uh, patients with lung carcinoids, and it's a medication called Everolimus. This is uh, something called an mTOR inhibitor. So it takes advantage of a certain pathway that the cancers use to grow. Uh, so it's a it's a pill. It's once a day, uh, and does have it does have um, good results. Approach. Yeah. So this is something that is uh, is really. I guess historical in nature. Um, so, so n normally all the you know the the lung tumors they go to the thoracic team. So, so you get taken care of by in the in the bigger centers the thoracic surgeon, thoracic oncologist. Um, you know, but again, this thoracic oncologist is only seeing this you know you know every every now and again, uh, whereas they see you know your your metastatic adenocarcinoma. You know day in, day out. So they may only see a few carcinoid patients a year. Um, you know, right. same with some of the neuroendocrine docs is, uh, is they say, well, yeah, we don't see long. We just focus on GI. Uh, but I think the pendulum starting to swing more towards the, the neuroendocrine docs taking, taking uh, control of this because, because the, the truth is the neuroendocrine tumors of the lung sort of behave more like some of the neuroendocrine tumors of the GI tract as far as, as, far as how you're going to treat. Um, so there's a lot of drugs that we use, um, you know, the Everolimus, the somatostatin analogs, the PRRT that, that a, a thoracic oncologist probably, you know, unless they're seeing a lot of this, they're probably not going to be very familiar with as far as, all right, how do I sequence treatment and, you know, what to look out for. So, so I think it's, I think yeah. it's uh, uh, more and more centers are u utilizing their GI neuroendocrine person to take care of all neuroendocrine tumors. Um, so, mm -hmm. so I'm, I'm primary. So, so I sort of fall on the fence here. Uh, I'm more of a, I'm a, <laughs> I'm a thoracic oncologist, but I, but it's kind of flip it around, you know, I take care of patients with neuroendocrine tumors of the, of the lung and also uh, GI tract pancreas. Uh, but that's all I see is, is either lung cancer or neuroendocrine cancers of all varieties. So generally I will follow patients. Um, so what happens is if someone has an early stage lug net and, and, and I, I say, all right, well, you know, let's send you for an operation. They go see my thoracic surgeon um, who will do the operation and then I will follow that patient from, from here on out. No, it's not. Um, um, but we certainly see it from time to time. Uh, some of it, you know, you know, I would think, all right, if you have, if you have a lobe, um, if it's, if it's only a lobectomy, you shouldn't suffer too much in the way of a uh, decrease in lung function, unless you're already starting out with decreased lung function. So, so where I can sometimes see this happen is, uh, so certainly in someone who has, I see this in my non-small cell patients, a lot is, is, all right, so they're starting out already with depressed lung function. Now I take out part of their lung, things are gonna go down even even further. In the carcinoid patients, this isn't a smoking related illness. And, and so they tend to have, mm -hmm. start out with good lung function, but perhaps maybe there is some dip neck that goes on that's been undiagnosed. And, and we say, all right, well, you know, is this why you're more short of breath? Because you were already starting out with decreased lung function because of dip neck. So that's certainly a possibility. Most, but most people, 
um, who have a lobe taken out, uh, recover well, and, and uh, without, with, with minimal um, uh, long-term symptoms. So we don't have very good prospective data. The, um, as I mentioned, the trial that, that, that had got this approved uh, was called something called the NETR1 trial. Um, and mm -hmm. that looked at patients with, with these abdominal uh, neuroendocrine tumors, didn't include any of the lungs. Uh, but there's a lot of retrospective data that says that, yes, any, you know, the PRRT is effective um, in, in these patients. And again, it's something that, uh, that we're doing at our center. We've, we've done a, a whole lot of uh, patients, including patients with neuroendocrine tumors of the lung, and it does seem to be pretty effective. So we're we're looking more. So I think I think one of the things that we're going to see moving forward uh, is more in the use of that PRRT that we talked about. So so there's trials upcoming that that are looking at that in lung uh, specifically. So so I think that is going to be where we uh, where we start heading. So there's there's other things that we look for and I or look at and I always encourage my patients. You know if there's a clinical trial. Um, available, I think that is always the, the, the best option. Uh, helps us gain a whole lot of information about how to treat this. You know, with 2% of all lung cancers, there's not a whole lot of clinical trials that are out there. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a clinical trial at our center using a novel mTOR inhibitor in patients who have failed on Everolimus that uh, uh, we're seeing if this is this may be beneficial. Um, there's um, there's other clinical trials looking at other targeted therapies. Uh, and then the, the newest type of modality is something called immunotherapy. So immunotherapy uses the body's immune system to help target the cancer. So it works really, really well for, for multiple other types of cancers. The early data um, hasn't really panned out much for uh, for the lower grade neuroendocrine tumors. Uh, uh, there was some suggestion that in a, in a trial recently that, that one of the immunotherapy agents may work a little bit better for the lung carcinoid patients than some of the other low grade neuroendocrines. So, so I think it's, it, you know, mm -hmm. I think looking at those clinical trials, look, you know, seeking out those, those, uh, those other opinions is, uh, is really important. So the DART trial is a uh, is a trial that uses immunotherapy. So two different uh, immuno agents. So one uh, called nivolumab, the other called ipilimumab. And this is for patients with rare cancers. So it's not just neuroendocrine specific. It's is it has a lot of different arms to it. And many of the arms are actually closed. I think all the I think all of the neuroendocrine arms are closed. Uh, and so uh, we had we had this trial open at our center, um, and in uh, and, and I think the results vary, and uh, and and they haven't yet been reported. There was some suggestion that maybe this was beneficial in the pancreas patients, uh, and they actually just reopened that arm, but then it just closed. It just closed like last week, I think. Um, so so the immunotherapy again, it's it's. Um, uh, and Keytruda, you mentioned Keytruda, it's a similar immuno agent to nivolumab. Okay. Uh, it's called pembrolizumab. So, so again, I think the jury is still out on some of the immunotherapies, but, but certainly if you have the option for a clinical trial, um, you know, I would, you know, I, I wouldn't pass up that opportunity. Uh, some of these drugs kind of, these trials come and go and you may get in on something, mm -hmm. something good. I think again. I think a uh, clinical trial, if um, if offered, I, I think it's always a, a good option. Large cell neuroendocrine carcinomas um, are are uncommon aggressive cancers. Um, so so generally, the treatment for it is with some chemotherapy. Uh, we actually have a trial that mm -hmm. just opened at our center last week using it using combination chemotherapy and immunotherapy in patients with uh, large cell neuroendocrine carcinomas of the lung. Uh, so, um, 
so look for look for trials. There's other trials out there as well. Uh, you know the um, that particular trial. I think uh, you you find out soon enough. You get your scans within within a few months and say, all right, is this working or not working? If it's working, that's great, and you continue on. If it's not, we need to make some changes. Mm -hmm.